Good morning, beautiful people of YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. On this week's video, we are once again gonna be working on the trusty, dusty VA WRX, but this time in the flavor of DRL bezels for non-fog light equipped cars. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. Let's check it out. Like I had mentioned, today we are gonna be replacing these bezels on the front bumper of my 2021 WRX. Now, I have been kind of putting this particular mod off for a little bit, and I'll tell you why. Number one, I really just kind of like the look of this particular bezel. I mean, since it is a non-fog light, I just kind of really like that subtlety look that the front of this car has. Of course, I say that kind of stuff, and you know, I got a hot pink X-Brace and a lit logo, but a little bit of contrast is good. But for the most part, I really like the fact that it's, you know, not a whole lot going on in the front of this car. The second reason is I've been waiting for these DRL bezels to come out for the non-fog light vehicles because I didn't want a hole here for not having fog lights and quite frankly, like I said, I like this look so I wasn't really ready to add fog lights to the car or at least at this moment. So I'm really excited that Noble has come out with a DRL for the facelift cars that does not have a provision for the fog light. On top of all that, the car is pretty dirty at the moment, which is the perfect time to start working on it and making sure I don't get any additional greasy fingerprints all over my freshly washed car. The first step is gonna be getting this car up onto my race ramps and removing the front bumper. Once we get the bumper off the car and onto the bench, we're gonna go ahead and open up the box and take a look at not only the bezels, but the included wiring harness. The one thing I do like about this particular Noble kit is it comes with its own proprietary wiring harness. So we can wire these DRLs up in a whole bunch of different ways, which we will discuss once we get to that point. But for now, let's get the car turned around, into the garage, bumper off, let's go. The car is in the garage and it is up on the race ramps. We have the rear wheel chalked up so it doesn't roll away or get out of control in any way, shape or form. And you know, just safety first. So that's always a good thing. So to remove the bumper, that's not very hard. We've got some 10 millimeter hardware up on top here along with some plastic push clips. Then we can move over to the side on each wheel well where you'll see there's a plastic push pin there. There's also some of these style push clips all underneath the front lip here. And once we get that, we could just kind of pop out our wings on the bumper and pull it forward. Now, because I have my lit logo, uh, there's gonna be a wiring harness back there, but luckily there's a quick disconnect, so we won't be hung up on anything like that. Now, if you guys are attempting to do something like this, but you happen to have fog lights or maybe some of the pre-facelift stuff that has the additional turn signal here, uh, removing the bumper is very similar, with the exception of when you go to pull everything off, you're gonna have some additional wiring here that you're gonna to wanna to make sure you disconnect before you just go tearing the bumper off and pulling on that harness. Let's get some tools, get the bumper off, start talking about these DRLs. Let's go. The bumper is off and on the bench. And before we get started, there is one thing I do want to touch on. Uh, one thing I'm really excited to see behind here, although I don't have any of the fog light stuff from the factory, it does look like the bumper itself is equipped to take the factory fog light. So it looks like all of the mounting points and stuff are here. It's missing like the actual hardware to like lock it down, but at least it's here. It's not like an additional accessory you have to buy if I wanted to upgrade to fog lights. Uh, same thing on this side. Um, all of the, the skeleton is here, which is really nice, although I'm not doing fog lights. If I wanted to upgrade in the future or try it out, I definitely could. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and remove our bezels. I don't believe these are locked in in any way, shape, or form except for those plastic tabs. So we can just kind of get behind it, push out to the front, and it should come off.
Before we just slam these bezels in there, let's take a look inside the box and see what Noble provides. Right off the bat, a very well packaged bezel uh, that has this like material over top of it so it doesn't scratch or do anything wild. And here is a good look at our new DRL bezel. I'm not sure how well this is coming through the camera, but although this does look like a high gloss black, there is a little bit of sparkle to it. So it definitely reminds me more of like a D4S color code than just like a piano black. So the ones that I had that came off the car uh, were a nice, just crystal clear piano black. And I do like this little bit of sparkle. I think that's gonna shine real good in the sunlight or you know, once the sun starts to set at night. The other important thing that we get in our kit is our wiring harness. Now this wiring harness is very extensive with a lot of stuff going on. So let's break all of that down. Right here is our Adafuse, which is gonna give us power to the DRLs, which I'm gonna go over more extensively once we actually do the wire up into the car. Because we can change where this goes. At that point, we can change the dynamic on how the DRL works. We can use it as a daytime running light. We can use it uh, when just the low beams are on. You can change it to where it's when just the high beams are on. It also has a sequential and non-sequential turn signal, which is what these clickable uh, switches are gonna do. There's gonna be one per side. Now, depending on if you have factory headlights, aftermarket headlights that have a sequential turn, uh, we can flip this to kind of match that sequential, or if it's just like a factory blinking style, it also has that option. In order for everything to work with the factory turn, there are the turn light piggyback harnesses here. We just kind of use this as an interrupter signal and that lets the DRL know that we're going left or we're going right or whichever turn signal you're using. Finally, we have the two connectors for the DRL, which is pretty self-explanatory. That's going to need a power ground and all that kind of good stuff, so it just plugs right in. There's also a small baggie of zip ties and gator clips. The zip ties are going to be for just, you know, securing all of this wire that's going somewhere. And the gator clips are going to be if you don't decide to use the Adafuse and you want to put in a different style uh, wiring or ignition for that light, then they can tap off any which power source you're looking for and you can use it endlessly whichever way you choose. For now, we're going to get the DRL bezels into the front bumper, then we're going to set our wiring up and test everything, and then once I have it just the way I want it, we can reassemble everything for a final time. All right, gang, here they are on the car. Looks pretty good. I like it. Got the DRL there. Like I said, I'm not sure if you can see. Oh, I can kind of get close enough. You can see a little bit of that flake in there where it's not just like the gloss black or the piano black. Uh, but this is a good idea of what it's gonna look like uh, on the car. I'll get you some better photos out in the sun and all that kind of good jazz once we get it all back together. But just to kind of compare that to what I took off. Here's what I took off. Here's what I put on. This had a little bit bigger honeycomb on it. You know, definitely a little bit different design than that. This still has what I believe is the provision for like brake ducting, or I'm not even sure. You might be able to fit a fog light behind there. I'll, maybe I'll try that out to try to keep that, that look kind of stealthy for the car, because I'm pretty low key. Minus old pinky over there. But anyway, we've got them on the car. They fit really nice. I like the look, but it's kind of hard to get an idea of what it looks like, you know, up on its side here. So we're going to move over to the wiring, kind of pre-wire the car. Like I said, hook everything up, test it, uh, make sure everything's working the way I want it. Then we're going to set our turn signals to match our headlights. At that point in time, we're going to tidy up this whole thing and then see what it looks like completely done.
Well, boys and girls, I've run into my first problem. Uh, I've already kind of run the wires up to the fuse box, which I will show you in a little bit, but the issue that I'm having is this right here. Uh, because my car did not have fog lights, I have a four pin connector that normally uh, would go into here with a fog light harness. And what that's gonna do, is gonna break out into two separate wires. One is gonna go to the fog light, the other is gonna go to that additional turn signal that's in the bumper. Unfortunately, the harness that I have from Noble is meant to hook up after that fog light harness. So there's actually a harness from here to here that I'm missing. And, you know, unfortunately, I didn't pick it up until now, which is kind of a bummer. What I'm going to have to do at this point is actually just hook the DRLs up as a standard DRL. I'm not going to be able to use the turn signal function until I can get myself some fog light harnesses and kind of revisit our turn signal, which is kind of a bummer because I would like to, you know, show you all the... Uh, sequential and non-sequential turn signal stuff with our switch but luckily we saw Damien's car and his install and that went a little bit more to plan although he was missing a fog light harness on that side but if you guys are looking to figure out how the sequential and non-sequential turn signals are hooked up for the VA chassis you're definitely going to want to check out that video now in this video I did a little bit different wire up job for how I want it wired over Damien's so stick around and still make sure uh, you get all the information possible because you might wire yours up different than I do, but we will get to that in just a moment. Let's keep going with the install. Here is a preliminary look at what our DRLs look like when everything is turned on. Now I will show you what I did differently this time than I did with Damien's car. So this is just our standard DRL that I have hooked up with the headlights. So with no headlights, uh, it's just kind of, you know, all the regular daytime running stuff, they are not on. I actually have these hooked up. If we pop the headlights on where you actually get the low beam bulb, on, that is when the DRLs come on. Now you might be asking, why did I do this particular wire up? We already did that with Damien's car. We ran our power wire all the way inside the vehicle to get a 12 volt ignition source from inside the car. So I just wanted to try a different option this time. And it's just something else you guys have, uh, you know, in your repertoire of knowledge that now you can figure out what kind of works for you, which kind of wire up is best for you and what do you think is easiest. The biggest issue we have with wiring with these cars is our underhood fuse box. So there's not a whole lot of really good 12 volt ignition power sources under our fuse panel. We don't really start getting to those 12 volt ignitions until we pop this interior fuse panel off inside the car. So we're gonna come over and we're gonna pop our fuse panel cover off and show you what I've done. So here we go. We have two separate wires. This wire right here with the butt connector, that is for my uh, lit logo at the front. And then the other one, which is this one right here, is for our brand new DRLs. Now, the reason I chose this fuse is because this is our standard 30 amp headlight fuse. So every time our headlights are on, this particular fuse is set. And that's why we have our projector low beam and our DRL on at the same time. Now, once again, as far as a wire up goes, if you choose to go this route like I did, keep in mind our add a fuses are one direction. So I did have to pull the original fuse out, turn the headlights on, and find out which prong was the predominant lead because one of these leads is gonna be directly hooked to the battery. The other lead is gonna be pre-fused by the fuse that was in the other one. So you don't wanna fuse and then back feed through a fuse out. So if you plan to do the headlight low beam wire up like I have here, make sure that our power wire is coming out towards the engine, not towards our fender. And this will be our 12 volt source. Other than that, I love doing a halfway decent job with wiring. You're not gonna see a whole bunch of, you know, just scattered red wires or anything around my engine bay, no sorry, Bob. But if you come on down here, we did share a ground with the same ground from our lit logos. Now, of course, this car is starting to get an abundance of wire here from these aftermarket headlights and our lit logo and, you know, now our DRL. So we try to try to keep the wire management to, you know, uh, absolute maximum, but sometimes it's just getting a little bit out of hand. 
With that being said, everything seems to check out at least to this point. Like I said, the turn signals aren't quite there yet because I am in need of the jumper harness from the four pin to the two pin, which I will order up here real shortly. And we'll probably revisit this just to show you how everything goes and everything works. Because I really do like the fact that I can have a turn signal and I get my choice of blinker or sequential turn signals. In fact, I don't even know what turn signals on this car. Let's hit it. Ah, I see I have a blinker style, which is different than Damien's. If you watch that video, he had the sequential and then we turned his DRL to sequential. So I will get the luxury of having the blink style and it's just something different. So you get to watch each one of these videos. There's something different between that car and this car. Then you, the consumer, can decide which way do you want it. Now let's get this bumper back on the car. I'm probably gonna have to wash this turb when I'm all done, but once it's all shined up, we're gonna take her out, put the DRLs on. Gonna be a great day. That's gonna wrap up our install for today. I had a great time tossing these fog lists, DRL bezels onto our 2021 VA. It was a relatively easy install and I wanted to do something different than what we did to Damien's car a few weeks ago. And once again, that just gives you some ideas of how you could wire things up differently. And just because you buy a kit that's meant for something doesn't mean that you can't be a little bit creative and try some things that might be a little bit out of the box. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and wait for it to be nighttime. I'm going to catch some footage while the sun's going down to really kind of get these DRLs to pop and give you a better idea of what you're looking at if you're interested in a modification like this. Also, if you stick around to the very end of the video, I'll show you a little clip of how I, uh, you know, unfortunately killed the battery on this thing while I was filming and just leaving all the headlights on. So I got the whole fam to come out here and help me push the car. But, you know, it's okay because I love it when everybody pitches in. So for thousands of parts just like this, plus tons more, be sure to hit up Import Image Racing for all of the best deals on the web and in the world. And if you're interested in saving even more money than the already great prices on the website, check out the Build Bucks program. Go right to the website, put in Build Bucks into the search bar, and you can find out how you save 5% on almost every single purchase. So we will catch you guys on the next one.